You see that girl? She looks happy, right? Telling jokes, smiling, having a great time, and dying inside. She's hurt and tired. Tired of all the drama. Tired of not being good enough. Tired of life. But she doesn't want to look dramatic, weak, and attention-seeking. So she keeps it all inside. Act like everything's perfect, but cries at night. So everybody thinks that she's the happiest person they know. That she has no problem and her life is perfect. If only they knew the truth. I was coming. Out of a sudden, a black guy comes and faces me and tells me, pointing to the door, opening the gate, saying that I should go in. He got he had a gun in his pocket. To me, saying otherwise, if I don't go in, I might end up getting shot. He walks me through. He pushes me through. And this part was everything that happened. He, he told me so many stuff. He told me to do certain things that I didn't even want to, but. Just at the moment, it's like when you're scared. I mean, no girl deserves such a thing because every girl should just be happy, not worry about being frightened, being scared. Don't stay quiet, say your story because why we got help around all over us? Please do it. And I'm letting you know this because I don't want girls to be ashamed, scared to say their story. I was, but luckily. Told me that I could count on them, and I did. And that person helped me out through this whole thing. And behind every, I know there's a smile in every girl's face, but behind the smile, there's always a story. My story is this guy walking all the way from over there, that he's walking closer to me, and I turn around, and I'm just like, oh, that's probably his car right there. And then he just comes running towards me, so I run as fast as I could to that alley. And then I make a turn, and then there's this like indoor door right there. He approaches me, and then he grabs me by the waist, and then he pulls me into that He just shoves a knife right here. He pulled my joggers down, and then after that, we hear a police siren. And then just runs. And I didn't even pick up the knife for evidence. I just ran back. Oh, well, like don't be afraid to tell your story. Like find some help, even if it's just a friend, a close teacher, close family member, or just somebody that working in your school as a social worker or a counselor. Tell your story. Don't be afraid. You're not alone. Um, it all started when I was a little girl. As the years went by, I pretty much do it every day. The person that did it, they considered him as part of the family. I would always try hiding from him, but in a way, he would always find me since we were in the same house. It was a two years therapy. Well, now I learned how to control myself. You learn how to not cry by talking to people. That's how you're gonna get more strength and you'll be able to tell your story without crying. I met him on my way home. He asked for he asked me if I wanted a ride. I didn't want to. But I did take down his number. Hit him up a couple of days later and then came here. We drove down the vision and he kept going. He pulled up in his motel. He had a gun in his truck. I didn't want to leave. I was scared. And he told me to stay in the car. Police report the next day. 
the t detective said it was never enough evidence. So he didn't do no time. He didn't spend a day in jail. He didn't spend a minute in jail. No time, no whatsoever. They let him go. Getting sexually assaulted is something you shouldn't stay quiet about. Getting therapy is the number one thing that could change your life completely. If I found my voice, you could too. Until that, then I will defend you. We should also feel safe wherever we go, especially if we're walking to the nearest store. I will defend you. It is not your fault. You're not a slut. You're not a whore. There is enough evidence, and I will defend you.